Alright, for this tutorial we're going to look at another concept involving linear models and that is the scatter plot. So here we have a few different examples of what a scatter plot could look like. Now first of all with example 2 you may notice that all these dots or these various points from a specific set of data seem to have an increasing type of a trend to it. This is known as a positive trend. Now also more specifically you can see that the points are pretty close together and they seem to be making a defined line. So we could call this a strong positive trend. Now similarly with example 3 here it looks like our various data points have a decreasing type of a trend. This is known as a negative trend. Now with this it seems like the points are not quite as close. So it, it looks like there's kind of a line there but it's not as defined as example 2 was. So in this case we could call it a weak negative trend. Now what about example 4 here? We have a bunch of data points but it doesn't look like that they have any specific trend whether it be a positive or a negative. It just looks scattered all over the place. When we have a scatter plot that looks somewhat like this it has no particular trend. So there's some of the basics behind a scatter plot. Now let's actually take a look at a real world example that would involve a scatter plot. So the table we have here shows the number of sales that a door to door salesman makes in a week with respect to the number of hours that he works that week. So for us we have this data here and for example 5 let's plot it on the coordinate axes over here to the right. So for example, our first point has an input of 0 and an output of 0. So we would just plot a point right there, 0, 0. And then we take the next point, 6, 1. So we would have an input of 6 and an output of 1. And then we just keep doing the same thing for all the other points. Input of 8, output of 3. And I assume that you get the idea, we just need to keep plotting all these points on the coordinate axes. So let's speed things up. So that's roughly what our scatter plot would look like with this particular data we've been given. So now let's take a look at example 6. So now they want us to draw a trend line that best fits the data in the scatter plot. So first of all, with the data points we have here, it looks like that there's a positive trend. Now they want us to draw a line that would best fit the data. Now a way to do that would to try to get a line that meets the data points somewhere in the middle. So we want to roughly have the same number of points above the trend line as well as below the trend line. So let's draw something that could fit that description. So that's about what our trend line would look like. So you could see it fairly evenly distributes the points to get a nice midline that can represent or model this particular situation. Now let's use this trend line and make an equation for it. So in order to make an equation for this line we would just have to find some points that look pretty close to it. So for one of them, we could use maybe this point way at the end here. And that one would be 40, 23. So our last point from the data table. And then it looks like we could probably use our first point as well, the 0, 0. So let's use those two points in order to make an equation for our trend line. So to start off, we'll want to find our slope, which will be our y2, which is 23, 
minus our y1, which is 0, divided by our x2, which is 40, minus our x1, which is 0. So when we simplify this, we get 23 minus 0, which is 23, divided by 40 minus 0, which is 40. Now, a lot of times when working with scatter plots and trend lines, you're going to get an equation for a line that isn't probably isn't going to work out very nicely. So for example, this 23 over 40, it's kind of a crazy looking slope. So let's just simplify it and make it into a decimal. So 23 divided by 40 would be roughly 0 0.58. So now that we have our slope, let's put it into an equation. So y equals our slope, which is 0 0.58 times x plus whatever our b value is. Well, we could find our b value by plugging in a point along our trend line. Well, for us, it might be easiest to use our point of 0, 0. So when we plug 0 in for y and 0 in for x, we could find our b. Well, 0 equals 0 0.58 times 0. Well, 0 0.58 times 0 is just 0. So we're left with b equaling 0. So when we plug that into our linear equation, we get y equals 0 0.58x plus 0. And we don't need to write the plus 0. So this linear equation here would model our particular set of data. Now let's use that equation we had from example 6 and predict how many sales the salesman will make if he worked for 52 hours. So again, our equation was y equals 0.58x. And we want to find out how many sales he'll make if he worked for 52 hours. Well, 52 hours would be an input or an x value. So if we plug that in for our x, we could find out our output, which would be the number of sales he'd make. So we have y equals 0.58 times our x value, which is 52. And then when we simplify that or evaluate it, we get a y value of roughly 30. So if he works for about 52 hours during the week, he'll get about 30 sales. We're going to look at a concept that is commonly used in linear modeling. And this concept involves the distance that someone goes based on their speed and how long they've been going that speed. So let's take a look at an example to show this. So here, Jerry runs at a speed of 10 feet per second from one goal line of the football field to the opposite goal line. Now for this particular situation, they wants to write a linear equation that would model his distance from the starting goal line with respect to the number of seconds he has been running. Now again, with like any linear model, we want a linear equation. Now a linear equation generally looks something similar to y equals mx plus b. Now for us in particular, with this type of a situation, our y is going to be like our distance. And the distance is going to equal our slope or rate of change well, rate of change for us would be like our speed. Because speed is a rate of change. For example, how many miles we're going per hour. And then times however long we're going that speed. So our x, our input, would be time. And then the plus b would actually be wherever our starting point is. So if we're to use this model, we want to plug in 
what we know about this current situation. So first of all, distance, we could just use d as the output variable for distance. And that's going to equal the speed, which for Jerry is 10 feet per second. So we'll have 10. And then times our time, which is our input. So let's use t to represent time. And then plus the starting point. Well, if he's starting at the first goal line, he hasn't gone a distance yet, so our starting point would be plus zero, which we don't need to write that. So for this particular situation, the linear equation d, or distance, equals 10 times t would model this particular situation. So Jerry's distance is going to equal his speed of 10 feet per second times the amount of seconds that he's running. Now let's take a look at one more example in regards to this concept. So for this one, we still have Jerry running at a speed of 10 feet per second from one goal line to the opposite goal line of a football field. But when we're modeling it with the linear equation, this time we want to model his distance from the opposite goal line. So rather than starting from the first goal line that he's at, we want to measure the distance that he is from the opposite goal line. Now with a football field, from one goal line to another is 100 yards. Now since there's three feet in one yard, we know that there's 300 feet in the football field. So 100 yards times 3 feet will give us the 300 feet between the goal lines. Now if he's starting right here where the S is, he has an initial distance from the opposite goal line of 300 feet. So when we're writing a linear equation, his distance at the start is going to be 300. Now as Jerry is running 10 feet per second towards the other goal line, he's getting closer and closer to it which would actually decrease the distance that he is from the opposite goal line. So rather than having a positive 10 for our slope or our speed, we need to have a negative 10 to accommodate that he's getting closer and closer to this opposite goal line. So we're going to have a minus 10 times the amount of time he's running. So when we're modeling this situation, Jerry's going to start at a distance of 300 from the goal line and then he's going to get closer and closer at a speed of 10 feet per second. So his distance is going to get smaller and smaller until he actually reaches that opposite goal line.